Yo, gare ni na na me, jo jo mo biro ndo. Yeah, yo. Yo. Yo garden na na ha me ha ju ja mo be ro ho no garden na na me garden na na me ha ju ja mo be ro no garden na na me ju ja mo be ro no garden na na ha me ha ju ja mo be ro ho no kaya man morang ay kaya man morang ay he ja gun gun ganyon go. Kaya man morang ay ja gun gun ganyon go. Kaya man morang ay he ja gun gun ganyon go. Kare ni na na me, kare ni na na me ha ju ja mo be ro no. Kare ni na na me ju ja mo be ro no. Ka prrrr, ka prrrr, ta ay. Another interesting uh, fact about uh, this area at uh, Deception Bay here, Boringen Park, is the, uh, the fact that there's um, a lot of wildlife, in particular, you know, your birds, heap of birds, but there's one that's very significant to our family that's here and that I seen when we first came here. Uh, was the white cockatoo. The white cockatoo in uh, the Gubby Gubby language we call them gigam and they were a totem animal to uh, some family members. I know that they are on the uh, Copiathan line, they're on the Barung Bal coin, so part of the, the emu family which is also uh, comes under the same uh, category as the Morton Bay Ash. So Morton Bay Ash and white cockatoo are connected and you know there's the proof, you've got the Morton Bay ash growing here in this park, right there, right beside it is the white cockatoo. Those two connected in the, the, the skin names. And so, you know, to see them together or close to each other out in the bush, uh, definitely, uh, you know, reconfirms that, that connection that uh, those animals and plants share the same uh, moiety or skin class. They live up to 80 to 100 years old, that white cockatoo. Uh, and, uh, you know, as I said, families regarded them as a, a totem animal. And there's even reports of them talking, conversing with people, uh, whether it be Gubby Gubby, Yagara, Waka Waka, Aboriginal languages, even, even into English. Uh, there was a, a, a story about the, the Petrie family and how they owned a white cockatoo. And this white cockatoo could speak English quite well. And he would yell out to um, the guys coming past in the river and they'd be selling their um, products, vegetables or fish. And usually, you know, as a person living on the river, you'd call out to them and they'd, they'd dock in and, uh, and you'd be able to trade with them and, and buy something off them. Well, on, the, on this one particular occasion, this white cockatoo would, was calling, no one was home. The Petrie family weren't home. <laughs> But the white cockatoo uh, copied off their voice and the call out to the, the guy that, for some uh, of his uh, product. And so he pulls in and he's walking up and yelling out for a while then realising that it was the white cockatoo. And so, you know, you, you've got stories of uh, many, many stories, but that's just one of those earlier ones in the, uh, by the Petrie family. You know, so Petrie was named after the township. Petrie Creek up at Danville where I was born, was named after this uh, particular family, living over there at Marumba Downs. There's also the rainbow lorikeet here, and uh, our families would call him Beer. And uh, when, you, when you look at the word Beer, Burham, Beer Burham, there's, there's a mountain over there, there's a township, it's part of the Glasshouse Mountains. And um, that's used in the same language, Beer Burham, but when you say Beer Burham, it's uh, barren is the, the word for wind and uh, the rainbow lorikeet on the wind. You know, even aunties, they talk about beer barum, wind is coming and barum beer or wind is gone. And barum beer is baramba, which is out at, at Sherberg. But with those cockatoos and parrots, uh, there's one thing that, you know, some of the elder, elders talk about is that those guys like to eat a lot of nuts grasses and seeds and so they always get thirsty real quick wherever they are or those parrots are cockatoos wherever they congregate 
you know there's going to be water not far from where they are. So just example, if you are out in an area like a desert aridy sort of area and you did come across a flock of rainbow lorikeets, white cockatoos, black cockatoos congregated there, you'd know that they're not going to be far from water because of what they eat, they have to wet the whistle. They're also associated with uh, water, with the rain. I know the black cockatoo, we al, we call him in our language, he is related to the rain. Um, and so, you know, when we see him flying low, calling out, and a call out will be a distressful sort of a call, we'll know that there's, there's rain coming just um, from him flying low and giving a particular call in that distressful sort of uh, voice call that he does make. The blue mountain parrot's name is Ewan, and there's the Glasshouse Mountains is one of the mountains that's called Ewan. And uh, people are, Ewan, what's that talking about? It's talking about that blue mountain parrot. Well known in this district and it was associated with uh, the mullet season. We can tell if there's a lot of fish coming. Before they come, we can tell if there's going to be a lot or not many by the amounts of or flocks of blue mountain parrot. If there's a whole heap of them on the coastline in the forest red gums, well then everyone will be like, oh yeah, the, we need more nets, uh, we need more spears, what, we need more people and boats. Because when they're going, well why are you saying that? Well look at the blue mountain parrot, Ewan, big flocks, there's a big lot of fish coming. So they were really um, good indicators. They, they told us and taught us a lot of things. And you know, once you, you sort of get in tune with that and you start to listen to nature, it definitely can sort of uh, make you aware of things that you never thought existed. So I'm just um, privileged that I know some of that information and get a chance to share it here at um, you know, a beautiful place, Deception Bay, right on the coastline where all these uh, stories originate from.